very much. Uh, my name is Biff Baker, and I've been given the, the enviable task of, of introducing Jean-Claude. And I say it's envi enviable because in this room it's probably the easiest job that anyone could ever have. You all undoubtedly know Jean-Claude better than I do. So this leaves me free to talk about whatever I wish. So um, now, uh, as I mentioned at lunch, some of you uh, were at lunch, that I'm, I'm, um, I'm not a person with mathematical background. My, my background was in foreign languages and literatures and, and, and all that stuff. And um, I often, I've often been, been told that my role at, at Alex Corporation is kind of like Forrest Gump. I'm valuable mostly for the, the naivety of my outlook, not because I, I actually know anything in particular. And um, well, be that as it may, I've been there for a long time and it's, it's been a wild ride. I think it might be interesting to know how, I actually, how someone like me actually came to work for Alex Corporation. Um, as I mentioned, I used to work in Russian. I used to actually teach Russian here at UCI. And in the Russian program, we would have periodic tea parties over in the trailers. We were housed in the trailers. And so we, all the people in the campus community who spoke Russian or who were interested in Russian would come to our tea parties. And among them was Jean-Claude's wife, Dina. So I got to know I got to know Jean-Claude's wife, Dina, a little bit. And we would occasionally meet with other Russian people. There would be barbecues and dinner parties and stuff like that. And so I knew Jean-Claude, but I never really understood what, I, what he did. I think he knew better than to try to explain it. I, really, I knew, OK, social science is somewhere over there, but what exactly it was, I never, I never understood. Now, then the day came when I needed to find something else to do. And I was very interested in educational software. So I did in-depth research on educational software, first of all, looking at the commercial operations, all the companies that were producing and selling it. They were so uninteresting that it practically put me off the project entirely. I, I, I came very close to deciding that this was not worth pursuing. No one was doing this in a way that was of, of any interest. Then I looked, started to look at university research projects. And they were a little bit more interesting. There were some that had some theoretical dimensions that were, you know, they were, they were of some interest. Then I found one that was much more interesting than any. I knew this is it. I have found the one I'm interested in. And I looked at, I started reading some of the articles. Um, uh, I didn't notice the names of the authors at, the, at, at first. I was just sort of getting, going for the main concepts. And I said, this is fascinating. I have to find out where this is going on. I look at the bottom of the article and said, University of California, Irvine. Oh my god, it's right here on campus. I can go over and walk over and ask these people about what's going on. So who's in charge of this thing? And I look some more and I say, um, OK, okay some names, names, names. Jean-Claude Falmagna. Jean-Claude Falmagna. So I marched over with minimal preparation, marched over to his office, knocked on his door. And I said, Jean-Claude. What you're doing is so interesting. I really want to know more about this. So he starts writing on the whiteboard. <laughs> and this is a lot of the stuff that, that was in the articles. And I'm watching and I'm watching, you know, with my you know, English major background. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm saying, OK, Jean-Claude, how much math do I have to learn in order to really understand this? He looks at me, goes back to writing on the board. <laughs> I said, no, I said, seriously, seriously, I'm willing to do some study, but I really want to understand this. How much math would I have to learn? What would I have to study? He said, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> no amount of study. So, but one thing led to another, and Jean-Claude found a place for me in, in this project, along with people who had obvious qualifications to be doing it, people with backgrounds in computer science and mathematics and psychology and so forth. And I think from my point of view, and I've been there now for 15 years, um, it's been a great ride, you know, and I think this is just another example of something we've heard from many of the testimonies uh, today, that uh, Jean-Claude is an extremely generous person. How many of us have benefited in one way or another from his willingness to to try to find a place for us in something. So, um, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, a little bit about the company, since I'm the only one who's going who's gonna to represent the company. I can't talk too much about the business aspects, because I don't know them very well. But um, for instance, I can tell you that it was started in 1919. 
uh, with three people, three or four people from, from the research project. And it was started in a little um, business space in Irvine next to the airport. So we were under the flight paths. We could hear the, the airplanes going. And um, all the development, sorry? Did you say 1990? I'm sorry, 19. 99, not 1919, of course. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I could have used a little bit more mathematics, as I was saying. Well, your uh, junk lot said you were late on the math. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, and we were there, that, they had, we had one room for all the developers. Uh, then in a few years, we moved to downtown Santa Ana, uh, where we had a much bigger space, and a lot of the people had their own rooms there. Um, and actually it was sort of a presentable place. We had one meeting room where we could bring guests, and that was nice. Um, then after a couple more years, we moved to Tustin, to the, uh, to the, uh, the perimeter of the former Marine base, the uh, helicopter station. And so that was, there, that was the first time that we actually had a big sign out front saying Alex, a big, red, big blue sign on the building saying Alex, so that was exciting. Uh, we started out with half a floor, then we grew, we took up the whole floor, and then about two, three years ago, we moved to our current space, which is back in Irvine. So we went, started in Irvine, went to Santa Ana, then Tustin, and back down to Irvine. And we've grown from three people in uh, 1999 to, to over 150 now. Uh, and I'm sure you've probably heard that the company was recently acquired by McGraw-Hill, so we're now, um, we're now working very hard to keep up with the expanded possibilities for the use of Alex. But um, I've often thought to myself, uh, we should, that we should do something like McDonald's, what McDonald's does, and you know how they always have the marquee out in front that says how many have been served. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, that would be great because uh, we would see what the scale of the operation is. At this point, it would say something like three to four million served. We currently have about a million users in the system at any given time, and over, historically, probably we've served almost four million uh, learners at various um, uh, various stages, and. What I do in the company isn't that interesting. I mean, I, I work with the difficult customers. I do the things that you're not supposed to talk about in, in, in polite company. But we make, you know, we make the product work for, the, for our customers. But one of the jobs that I've had over the years is to update our, our documentation. And that involves updating our selected bibliography of works on knowledge bases. One of the chapters in our handbook is a, a selected bibliography. So I have to go out and do some research in that. And, and I actually found some interesting stuff this last time around. Um, I discovered that some of the insights of knowledge space theory were actually anticipated in the 16th century by a little known mystic by the name of Mother Stochastica of of Brussels, who, who founded the partial order of, she founded a partial order of nuns known, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, known as the, the Little Sisters of Britannomyces. They divided their time between mathematics and brewing beer. Now at some point they began to have trouble with their anti-symmetry and they were, they were downgraded to a, a, a quasi-order. But nonetheless, their work was very interesting. Uh, most most convents most, uh, most convents have you know these these quadrangular um, what's the word uh, a cloister? They have a quadrangular cloister with with gardens and so forth. These nuns had a um, a coordinate plane, and they would practice various types of random walks. So this is um, and a few things that they did may have been may have been um, anticipations of knowledge bases. But in any case, uh, returning to the present, this selected bibliography of works about knowledge spaces now runs to, to about seven closely typed pages. So this is it's very significant. And some of the work, of course, is by Jean-Claude's team, but much of it is by people throughout the world who've come to participate in this line of research. And as far as I can see, there, there are different levels at which a scholar can be significant. You can be significant because you wrote some, some interesting publications. You can be significant because you have interesting students or a lot of interesting students. Um, one of the highest levels of significance has to be starting your own field of research. And I think that's what Jean-Claude has done. He started a scientific field. 
and we at Alex uh, are very proud to be associated with, with uh, what Jean-Claude has, has achieved. So without further ado, we'll move on to the, the substantive part of this afternoon's session. Mm -hmm.